Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tamisha. Uh, it has been a minute since I've recorded a video, but I'm here today. And um, if you clicked on this video looking for a recipe, because that is generally what my entire channel is about. <laughs> um, sorry guys, this is not gonna be a recipe video, but it will definitely be one that you will probably be interested in and um, you can take some uh, very valuable information from it. So I'm in my car because I am recording um, my recent experience with Frontier Airlines. So um, I was supposed to record this video probably about three weeks ago but as you can tell from my voice I have been sick um, since I got back from my trip I recently um, flew Frontier Airlines from Charlotte North Carolina to San Diego California to visit my oldest son who is stationed out there and I've always been so curious about Frontier because I've heard so much about it um, being that they are a low budget <laughs> no frills airline and so I wanted to just kind of uh, get my own experience and draw from it and I have a lot of notes <laughs> a lot of notes on my experience and hopefully um, it can help you if you are also curious about Frontier Airlines and you're trying to save a little bit money on your travel um, I'm gonna give you the nitty-gritty today so once again, if you are watching my channel for the very first time, my name is Tamisha. Um, I generally um, only share recipes and all things food related on my channel, but um, recently I have wanted to um, branch out a little bit more into some of the things that I'm also very much passionate in, um, passionate and interested in and travel has always been um, one of my biggest passions I don't know if you guys know this but um, I did work for a major airline for close to 10 years um, I've traveled all over the world because I did grow up a military brat <laughs> and so um, and then that um, you know spurred into my love for travel and working for an airline and being able to travel with them shout out to the old US Airways Piedmont Airlines uh, regional group <laughs> if any of you guys are watching this but anyhow I'm rambling so I um, because I love travel so much I am a member of um, multiple <laughs> Uh, Facebook and Instagram um, travel pages I love looking at other people's travel experiences and um, seeing all of the amazing destinations that I want to add to my Pinterest travel board for you know my future bucket list and um, so one of the conversations that always comes up is Frontier Airlines and um, it's pretty interesting how you know people's opinions of it and the fact that it, it is a it is a it is a low budget <laughs> no frills airline so I'm going to share with you guys um, my experience and um, give you guys my information of uh, well my uh, opinion on Frontier Airlines this video is not sponsored in any shape form or fashion um, I uh, spent my own money <laughs> on my ticket and everything so um, I just wanted to just share my opinions with you guys so I'm gonna get into my notebook and try to give you as much information um, as I can think about um, with this so um, the very first thing I want to talk about is that I feel like Frontier um, is pretty amazing with the um, amount of deals that they are always, always, always offering. Um, there's always some type of special on their tickets. Usually it's a 50% off, a 75% off, or even um, a 90% off um, code that they usually always have that you can get. Um, in your email if you sign up for their um, if you go to their website and sign up for their notifications um, you can always get an email and they're always going to tell you what type of deals they're offering and those um, specials are either for one way or round trip tickets usually 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 they're always um, for one way but as of recently the past um, several emails that I received from them over the past month there have been for being able to book your tickets round trip even as up to $90 round trip. <laughs> Nine, I'm sorry, not $90, 90% off. Not even get that correct, 90% off, <laughs> not $90. Um, but 90% off round trip tickets. And so um, 
um, what I've been able to find like tickets to Orlando for $15 each way um, when I flew from Charlotte to San Diego my ticket was um, $225 round trip and that is pretty pretty amazing considering the fact that um, it was a last minute ticket so their ticket specials can either be um, you have to book them three days in advance or you know seven days in advance and I think I booked mine at 225 um, with the three day in advance code um, and so the reason why one of the other reasons why I wanted to book my ticket through Frontier is because I was visiting my oldest son and he just moved into um, his first place <laughs> um, he's in the Navy so um, he's been staying either on the ship or um, in the barracks and so um, he just made E5 within the last year which now means that he can move off base so he has you know he has his own space so I wanted to go visit and see his see his home and um, so I wanted to be able to actually go there with money in my pocket and not spend so much money on my ticket. So um, it made more sense for me to go ahead and book Frontier so that I could save a little bit of coins <laughs> so that I can get there to actually enjoy my son and enjoy my trip and we can go out or I can, you know, put a little bit of stuff in his house for him. So that was my main purpose in the booking um, them because $225 round trip um, from coast to coast is a really, really good deal, um, especially because um, he's been stationed there for about three years now and usually I don't come out any less than about $500 for a round trip ticket to to go to San Diego so um, they always run in deals either 50 75 or 90 percent off and if you sign up for their notifications you'll get an email almost every single day with um, their specials on particular routes or you know they'll let you know what their blackout dates are and stuff like that they even have something called a discount den I'm looking down <laughs> I'm looking down at my notes to make sure I don't miss anything um, but they even have something called discount den which I'm not a member of but I'm thinking about um, when I was getting my notes together for this video, I'm thinking, you know what, it's actually maybe worth um, signing up for. So their discount then is $59 is a yearly um, subscription service and you get exclusive rates. Um, so when you're on their website or on their app and you're booking your ticket, you'll see the regular rates and then you'll see the discount um, den rates. It'll be like a little cute bear um, that indicates that's a discount den. And their discount den is really really cool because um, those low rates that you find um, through the discount den you can actually um, have up to six people booked in your itinerary that will qualify for that discount den rate as well and um, if you have discount den I think it's if your if your kids fly for free with you if they're 15 um, years old or under they fly for free with you so that's pretty pretty amazing um, I've even seen um, emails from them for them from them periodically if you are a discount den member you can get a buy one get one free ticket so you and you know another adult um, travel companion can travel with you and their ticket would be free so I think that that is definitely um, worth the $59 and so um, one of the tricks I like to do with their um, their website or their app is when I'm looking at rates and I'm trying to plan out um, trips going forward or how I actually was able to plan out my trip to my son was um, click on month in view. So you could put in your particular date, but if you click on a thing that says, <clears throat> I'm so sorry guys, I'm so sick. <clears throat> I've been so sick recently, but if you click on their month in review, it'll give you the entire month and the particular, um, how much that ticket is each day. So it'll help you plan your trip a little bit better. So the downside, <laughs> the downside to these amazing, amazing, amazing rates is, guys, some of these routes are absolutely re ridiculous okay so remember I told you about my $225 ticket that I booked um, from Charlotte to San Diego the downside for that is I left Charlotte um, 
on the very first flight out in the morning, like 6 a.m. And I flew, um, my layover was in Denver. So I got into Denver at 7.35 a.m. Denver time. My flight did not leave from Denver to San Diego, guys, until 10.50 p.m. <laughs> I had the longest layover in Denver ever. And it was so funny because um, I'm in this um, Facebook travel group called Black Travel Movement. And I posted um, in the group, I said, hey guys, I got this really, really long lay layover in Denver. Send me some ideas of things to do to kill my time while I'm there. And the very first comment someone said was like, oh, you must have put booked a frontier ticket. <laughs> Oh my God. So that was the downside is that I had to spend hours the entire day. What is that? Like 15 hours in Denver. Um, luckily, there is a uh, train that is um, at the Denver airport. This is also a little travel trick for you guys. If you happen to fly into Denver, there's a train from the um, Denver airport, $10.50 for the entire day to ride that train and it'll take you straight into um, downtown Denver to the Union Station and you can connect from there to wherever else you want to go so um, <laughs> yes so the fares can be absolute the routes can be can be not always not always I won't I'm not gonna speak on every single route I'm just knowing for my particular route it was absolutely absolutely ridiculous with the layover time um, my daughter just recently booked front here as well now for her <laughs> for her experience she is not as happy um, with her trip she uh, booked her trip to Puerto Rico to San Juan and um, she's not happy with her routing I will say that her routing was worse than mine so her flight went from Charlotte North Carolina to Orlando Florida back up to Atlanta and then Atlanta to San Juan tell me where that makes any sense at I don't know <laughs> I don't know but her ticket price was absolutely amazing as well um, she's on a gap year she's on a gap year and so um, she is working for a month saving all her money and then traveling and then coming back to work for a month saving all her money and then traveling so girlfriend is doing her thing but that route was absolutely ridiculous so just keep that in mind when you are looking at these amazing deals make sure you take a look at your layover times and um, how many stops you're gonna have to make to get to your destination okay so the next thing I want to go over is their bags um, and seats the bag prices and the seating um, so listen <laughs> They will charge you for everything, okay? Keep that in mind when you are booking your ticket. They charge you for everything. Um, so for your bags, the only thing that's free in your bag is your personal items. So if you have your pocketbook, um, maybe like a small laptop case, a small backpack, anything that's going to fit underneath the seat in front of you, you're not going to have to pay anything for. That's your personal item. Um, also keep in mind that their, their space underneath their seats are not as standard as any other airline. So um, a small backpack will work underneath your seat. But if anything has to go in that overhead bin, you have to pay for it. <laughs> um, and it, you know, you have to pay for your carry on items. So keep that in mind when you are booking your ticket. So if you out when you're booking your ticket, and you want to uh, and you know you're going to have a carry-on item or you know you're going to have a check bag it's best for you to go ahead and pay for that item as you are booking your tickets because if you pay for it after you book your ticket or if you pay for it at the ticket counter when it's time for you to take your flight you are going to pay more money for it so your carry-on item and this is another thing that um, you should keep in mind your carry-on item is $39 um, if you pay for it as you're booking your ticket but if you get to the airport and you're trying to pay for your carry-on item if you pay for it at the ticket counter the day of your flight is $50 if you get through security and you get to the gate 
and you're trying to think, oh, okay, well, I'm not gonna pay for this carry-on item. You know, you think you're gonna try to let it slide and they deem it too big um, to be a personal item, you're gonna pay $60 for it at the gate. So, your check luggage is the same thing. If you pay for it, um, <clears throat> if you pay for your check luggage, as you're booking your ticket, it's $37. If you pay for it at the airport, it's $50. To me, it makes more sense to do this because when I um, booked my ticket and I knew I had a long layover in Denver, I wish that I would have actually checked my luggage because I had to carry, my, you know, take my carry-on around with me um, for that whole day. And there's no lockers or anything there. So um, I wish that I would have went ahead and, and checked my luggage because it's, it's two dollars cheaper <laughs> to check your luggage instead of me paying for the carry-on item so if you know that you have a long layover or whatever and you, or you just don't want to be bothered with your carry-on item throughout the airport you might as well check it because you're not saving any money the only thing you may be saving is time because you have that item right there depending on where your destination purpose is you may have to immediately get off the aircraft and go to wherever you're going and you don't have time to be fooling with baggage claim. So keep that in mind. But in my opinion, if you're just casually traveling, um, paying for a check luggage makes more sense. Or <laughs> do if you're just like, you know, a simple minimalistic traveler, keep it down to a simple small backpack and keep it moving and don't pay anything. Okay. <laughs> um, let's talk about the seats, honey. I told my kids when I got off my first flight that the seats felt like I was sitting on like a park bench. There is absolutely no comfort. There's absolutely no comfort in the seating whatsoever. Like I said, they spare all expenses. <laughs> they spare all expenses when it comes to comfort. Um, so keep that in mind as well. Um, to be prepared for that, make sure that you have your neck pillow. Make sure that you have a blanket. Um, I'm even going as far as to say, you remember those little seat cushions that, that um, your parents would tie to their uh, kitchen table? The, uh, the, you know, the seats to your kitchen table. I would even recommend <laughs> bringing one of those to sit down on because the seats are extremely uncomfortable. Also, they don't recline. So um, make sure that you prepare yourself to be comfortable on your flights because um, it's not happening. Also, um, choosing your seats, there is a, a fee for that as well. I think I think I want to say it was like twenty one dollars, somewhere ten dollars. I don't remember exactly. Um, but this choosing your seat is not free. So if you don't choose your seat when you're booking your ticket, your seats are going to be randomly assigned to you. And if you book your ticket with a group of people chances are you're not going to actually end up sitting together um, they do have something called their new stretch seating which is um, like their premium seats on the aircraft um, you'll see it when you get on because most of the seats are gray and then the stretch seating they're the only black seats on the aircraft those seats come pre-reclined um, they're a lot more um, cushioned and um, they actually have a full um, seat back tray whereas opposed to the other seats like you literally get like something like this <laughs> but the um, in the black um, stretch seating you um, actually get something big enough to actually set your laptop down on and um, there's more space so you have um, you can actually stretch your legs out a little bit better and I think that um, the website says that there's like up to an additional seven inches of space in those stretch seating but prepare yourself um, what I would say is what I would know next time is that I would just make sure I have a neck pillow make sure I did have a blanket I did say I did have that because I always travel with a blanket um, which helped me out tremendously because I was able to kind of you know cover myself and then ball up the corner <laughs> for my neck um, but I would be more prepared with something to sit <coughs> something that I could actually sit on um, like a little cushion underneath 
my area. <laughs> um, so yeah, just be prepared with comfort and you'll be okay. I would not recommend, um, like if you had a, a really long flight, luckily my flight was broken up from, you know, Charlotte to Denver and Denver to, um, San Diego. So I think the longest I was on the, on the plane was like three and a half hours, um, at a time. And, um, that was long. I wouldn't recommend being on them any longer um, than that. Really, honestly, two hours or less, um, if you're not prepared for comfort, would be um, ideal. Okay, so the next thing I want to go over is this. One thing that I was super, super, super impressed about is they are about their business when it comes to being on time, okay? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely about their business. So, they um, print on the board, you know, obviously they always have like the, um, the time that the, the, they start boarding and everything like that. They board on the dot. If your ticket says boarding starts at 840, honey, you better be in line at 835. Don't be in the bathroom. Don't be casually eating somewhere else. Be in your gate area because they make sure that their departures are on time. And I was highly impressed about that. Like they don't dilly dally around at all. Boarding goes very, very quickly. Um, they get you in your seat and they get that door closed so that they are pushing back from that gate on time so that you can get to your destination at the time you booked your ticket for so shout out you know big big props up to frontier for that i love them for that um what i will also say that i was highly impressed about is the crew members and the um the airport um the in-flight crew as well as the agents um from the ticket counter to the gate the entire process, every single person that I came in contact with um, that was a Frontier um, employee was absolutely amazing, um, very, very personable, very friendly, always had a smile on their face, upbeat. Um, even my gate agents, they were telling jokes. <laughs> they were even making jokes about, you know, the bag fee. They said, listen, you knew this when you booked your ticket don't shoot the messenger so um but they were all very very friendly and i love that especially because you never know um just from my own experience with being an airline employee um i always try to think about this i never knew what a person's reason for travel was um they could be traveling because they're going somewhere to celebrate um, and relax and enjoy themselves um they could be traveling for business or in some cases where i've had to travel myself um, for personal reasons that weren't so great, you know, maybe a death in the family, maybe somebody is sick. So you already have a lot on your mind when you're traveling. And so when you have somebody who greets you with a smile, you know, ask how you're doing um, and things like that. And they don't take the fact that the airline industry is really, really chaotic and very stressful, but they don't let that affect your your flight experience it really makes a big difference so i really loved the fact that frontier they were serious about being on time and that um their agents were amazing okay so in flight experience these are things that you should definitely be prepared for snacks and drinks are not free <laughs> not even a peanut okay so be prepared make sure you have your credit card and be prepared or bring your own snacks um bring your own snacks with you um and pack you know pack some things into your bag so that you don't have to worry about paying for snacks on your flight because you will pay for them um i think that the snacks start at like 5.99 um and up and then the drinks i believe were 2.99 or 250 for your drinks so make sure you are prepared for that oh i'm sorry one thing i forgot to mention um and i don't want to skip over this because i thought this was pretty cool too you for your seats and your bags you can purchase like their upgrades they're called um two bundle packages which is one is called perks and one is called the works and um if you purchase those you can include your bags and you're choosing your seats in those so maybe something you might want to look at they will offer that to you as you're booking your ticket um so if you know that listen i want to make sure i have a certain seat i like the window or i like the aisle or i want the stretch seating or you know you're going to have a certain amount of bags your seating and your baggage does get discounted if you purchase one of those bundles okay 
back to the in-flight experience. Um, be prepared to pay for your snacks or make sure you have some snacks in your bag. Um, also, there is zero entertainment. Zero entertainment. So make sure that your devices are fully charged, um, your laptops, um, your cell phones, your tablets or whatever. Make sure that you have them um, fully charged. Um, make sure you have your headphones already and make sure you have, you know, your music downloaded or, you know, download you some Netflix uh, movies or TV shows or whatever um, before your flight so that you can actually be entertained during your flight because there is none on the flight at all. <laughs> um, and then a last thing that I will say, I have spent my life traveling, I'm almost 40 years old, I'll be 40 in January, and I've spent my life traveling, I've been on many, plenty, plenty, plenty of airplanes. And what I will say that Number one, um, most important thing to me is that the entire experience, safety was number one. And as a, air, a former airline employee, they, they push that in your head so much. Safety is our number one priority. Safety is your number one priority. Um, takeoff to landing was the smoothest that I have ever experienced. Um, just, you know, I felt very, very safe. And what I will say is that where they spare the expenses on everything else, um, they did not spare it on making sure that their aircrafts were safe, safe and uh, fully equipped, that their, um, their pilots and their co-pilots knew exactly what they needed to do <laughs> to get us from point A to point B without um, any type of issues. So I will say that I was, I was very impressed with them on a lot of things and what I will say for sure is that um, will I fly Frontier again absolutely absolutely um, would I recommend it absolutely I would recommend it I would just say that um, if you fly them just take note of everything that I that I spoke about so that you can be prepared um, they are not they, they are known for being low budget and no frills and if you book your ticket expecting anything more than that then you kind of plan yourself you know but if you book your ticket um, already armed with this information then you're good to go and another thing I would like to say is that um, it all depends on what you are traveling for for me safety is number one um, safety is number one wherever I need to get to, but also being able to actually enjoy the destination that I'm traveling to. And so I don't really, it doesn't really bother me unless I'm traveling overseas as I'm, you know, or if I'm doing a long, long flight, then yeah, I want a little bit more comfort. But if I'm just trying to get somewhere and I want to just enjoy myself and I want to enjoy my family and, um, my focus is more on my destination than how I actually get there, then I'm okay with, you know, some of these corners being cut so that I can have a better experience on the other end. So thank you guys. If you lasted to the end of this video for listening to me ramble on about my experience with Frontier Airlines, thank you for listening to all this congestion <laughs> going on and for me looking all different kind of ways and not actually looking at this camera I'm trying to get better at recording um, but in the future other than recipes and cooking videos I definitely do want to um, branch out a little bit more and share some of my travel um, tips and adventures with you guys it, it is the next closest thing to my heart um, other than my babies of course but it's the next closest thing to my heart that I'm passionate about next to um, cooking so if I can combine food and travel and bring it to you guys that would be incredible but until next time guys i hope you have an amazing week thank you so much for watching once again my name is tamisha and peace